Today we will be learning how to control a VFD using an HMI via Modbus RTU. The HMI we're using is the MT4434TE, one of our more common HMIs and best sellers. This one does run on the Modbus RTU protocol. Every Kinko VFD also runs with Modbus RTU. Today we'll be using the CV100-2S-0007G. Right here in the COM0 port, you'll see the data A and data B are on 1 and 6 respectively, with the signal ground being at 5 for the two-wire operation. So to start this process, we're going to go to our HMIware and open a new program. We're going to call this one VFD Operation. Uh, this is going to be your graph element window to the left. We're going to go into HMI, find the MT4434TE model. I already have this one set up to the right, but you'll just drag and drop from the list. After you get the HMI, you're going to go down to your PLC. The PLCs for Kinko have six different models. Uh, the one we're concerned with is the Kinko Inverter, as that one is the VFD. PLC inside the software. We're going to also drag and drop that one there. The connection between the two is going to be under the serial port connection. You're going to drag and drop that into the graph element window and you're going to drag the HMI and the VFD into the location so the software ensures that there's a connection there. If you try and connect them just free floating there might be an error. Then we're going to double click onto our HMI and go to the COM0 setting. We're going to ensure that we're in RS45-2 wire as that's, the community, as that's the hardware setting you need to run the Modbus RTU protocol here. You can set up 4-wire or RS-232 on other scenarios, but for this one you need the 2-wire. This one's the baud rate selection. Uh, the HMI has many more baud rate options than the VFD does. The VFD only has 6. We're going to use basic default settings in the VFD, which is 9600. Uh, you can utilize other ones between 4800 and 125,000 that you'll see within the B3.00 section. Uh, under that same section, you'll see that the data bit is going to be set to 8, the parity check will be set to even, and the stop bit will be set to 1. You can customize these, but these are going to be the default settings for the VFD. Right here, if you take a look under E3.00, B3.00, you're going to see that the communication configuration is set up as a default 001, which means there's a 1 in the units place, the 9600 BPS, a zero in the data format here in the tens place as 182N and RTU. You can communicate through Modbus ASCII as well. And the hundreds place is going to be the wiring code, which is direct connection via RS485. Uh, you don't want to use the modem connection in this scenario for 232. So after we have all these confirmed and double checked against this, against the data format there, we're going to want to go back to our HMIware, hit OK. And then we're going to go into our PLC and make sure that it's set to station 5. The default setting for the VFD is station 5. These station numbers can range between 1 and 127 stations. Station 0 is broadcast where it sends out to all connected VFDs but gets a response from none of them. So after that you're all set up. What you can do is see here I've already set up a, a basic program for controlling the operation. If you go into the control word uh, when the user manual in section 6 the communication protocol defines a control word 1 as register 0x3200. It's a hex value. Um, the HMI can only operate in decimal digits, so you have to be able to convert that from hex to decimal. This second page here is going to show you the bit control locations of that control word 1. Uh, so we're, really, we're mainly concerned with bit 0 through bit 3, as the running command, stop commands are all going to be in bit 2 to 0. Bit 3 is the forward and reverse, and bit 7 we're going to need as the host computer control word. Bits 8 through 15 are not necessarily useful for this scenario. Bits 4, uh, four 5, and 6 are just for other settings that we don't necessarily need for right now. What we'll do is go into here, double check where the, uh, the inputs are. Right here I have an input for the control word. A 0x3200 is uh, 12,800. We have a plus 1 offset. So that's controlling a word as the integer is from 0 to 255. If you know the inputs that you're searching for, you have 4x. And again, there's your, your address location. You can see that you can input values that control those words and commands uh, directly as an input. Uh, you would have to know what numbers to input to get what you wanted out of it. For our sake, it's just going to check. A simpler way to do this is through a multiple state switch. Again, you're using the same address but you're going to be mapping values from a list location, knowing what those decimal values that control those words are, and then tagging them so that you know what button you're actually pressing. So when I say 
zero, I want it to go forward and down to three coast to stop forward. That's going to be controlling the actual location. Another method that you can use to control this is through a macro code. Macro codes would be what the buttons down there are representing on switch one and switch two. I've already input a macro code into here, so we'll check that out. What you have to do in this macro code is define whether there's a switch uh, location. You can set up variables that you will need. Here I've defined the variables as to write into location 4x12801. So I've already set that variable, so it's no need in this scenario. We're just going to have bit control for uh, on, off, and direction. So what this does is it checks if it is on or it is off. Uh, if it is one, then you set direction. Um, you check the direction bit, see if direction is one or direction is zero. Then write in which direction you're moving forward or back into variable one, that being 199, 197, 205, and 207. So what you can do is when you go into the actual HMI, you can just touch those switches. Those switches would then control those bit locations that we're checking if they're one or zero. We can utilize tags and we have to ensure that it's set to toggle because you want to be able to toggle them on and off, not setting a zero or, or setting a, a, or sending just a single pulse because directions will change instantly. This one will be also in toggle and this is checking for forward or reverse as direction. So switch zero is going to be on off, switch one is going to be direction. Those are all bit state switches that I used. Uh, very simple input to write. Uh, the multiple state switch is a drop down list where you can check. What we'll do last is compile this. And I'm going to simulate this one so you guys can see what it looks like when it's operating on your touch screen. This is a direct offline simulation, so there's no VFD actually connected. We just have to ensure that the macro code does compile here. If there's any errors, it'll show up in the macro code pre-compile and, and check. We do have a video later on showing that this has, this has no compilation errors, and we'll show you a video of the HMI actually operating an AC motor. So when I select forward, you'll see that that's reading and writing to that location, and it says 199. If I type in something like 197 here, you'll see it goes to coast to stop forward. If I type in a value of 205, it's going to go to reverse, or coast to stop reverse. turns it back on to reverse and that turns it to forward. So those are just multiple ways to control everything. You can close out of here and we're all set.